This aircraft survived the impossible. Stay till the end to see how. And if you haven't yet, subscribe, like, comment and share. The aircraft departed Kuala Lumpur earlier tonight. This is the final leg of a long journey. Inside the cockpit, everything feels routine. At the controls is Captain Eric Moody, a calm, experienced pilot. Tonight, he is joined by First Officer Roger Greaves and Flight Engineer Barry Townley Freeman. The aircraft levels off. At 11,000 meters, the engines hum steadily. Captain Moody checks the weather radar. Clear, smooth air for the next 500 kilometers. No storms, no turbulence. In the cabin, most passengers are asleep. Dim lights, quiet conversations. Nothing suggests this routine night flight is about to become one of the most terrifying events in aviation history. Just after passing over Jakarta, something changes. At first, it's barely noticeable. A faint haze forms inside the cabin. Passengers rub their eyes. Others glance around. Confused, the air looks thicker. Within minutes, the haze becomes smoke. Not heavy, not black, but unmistakable. Cabin crew move quickly. They search galleys, overhead panels, electrical compartments. No alarms, no flames, no smell of burning wires or fuel. Still, the smoke grows thicker. At 11,000 meters, the thought of a fire is terrifying. If there is a fire, it must be found immediately. Up in the cockpit, Captain Moody feels unease. The aircraft enters what looks like thin cloud, but something feels wrong. These clouds aren't on the radar. Roger Greaves checks again. Nothing, no thunderstorms, no weather systems. Yet outside the windshield, the night sky looks alive. The crew exchange glances. Something is out there, something invisible. Without warning, a strange light appears. A pale, electric glow surrounds the aircraft. Passengers gasp. Some believe the plane is on fire. Outside, the engines glow brilliant white. Inside the cockpit, the instruments show nothing unusual. No fire warnings, no overheat alerts. Then, one engine surges violently. The noise echoes through the aircraft. Suddenly, it shuts down. An engine flame out. Flames streak backward. Along the wing, passengers scream. Cabin crew shout commands. Loose items are secured. The aircraft begins to descend. Captain Moody maintains control. Seconds later, another engine fails. Then another. And then, silence. All four engines have stopped. No thrust, no power, no explanation. For the first time ever, a Boeing 747 is completely powerless at cruising altitude. British Airways Flight 9 is now a glider 10 kilometers above the ocean and falling. The engines are gone. The familiar roar that fills the cabin vanishes. What replaces it is silence, an unnatural silence at cruising altitude. British Airways Flight 9 is no longer flying. It is gliding 10 kilometers above the Indian Ocean. The Boeing 747 begins a long, slow descent. Inside the cockpit, Captain Eric Moody grips the controls. The aircraft is stable for now. Though never designed to glide, a 747 can still travel 15 kilometers forward. For every kilometer it drops, that distance is their only hope. Altitude is called out. 10,000 meters, 9,000, 8,000. Below them, dark ocean.
to the north, the mountains of Java. They must avoid them at all costs. Then another problem, the autopilot should have disconnected. It hasn't. Moody disconnects it manually. Now the aircraft must be flown by hand. Airspeed is critical. Too fast. The engines won't restart. Too slow. The aircraft will stall. But the airspeed indicators are unreliable. They don't know how fast they're flying. Nose up, nose down. Small corrections in the cabin. Passengers feel the rise, then the fall. A silent roller coaster in the dark. The ground is getting closer without engine power. Pressurization begins to fail. The air grows thin. Oxygen masks drop from the ceiling. Some work, some don't. Fear spreads in the cockpit. The crew reach for masks. Captain Moody's works. Roger Greaves does not. Seconds pass. He can't breathe. Moody faces a choice. Descend gently or dive steeply. To restart the engines, he decides. The nose goes down. The aircraft accelerates. Passengers scream as gravity presses them into their seats. Loose items slide. Children cry. The flight engineer works the restart checklist. Fuel. Ignition. Nothing. Again. Still nothing. Altitude falls. 6,000 meters. 5. 4. The mountains of Java. Rise ahead. If the engines don't restart, they won't clear them. Captain Moody takes the microphone. His voice is calm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We have a small problem. All four engines have stopped. Then, a call. A roar. One engine comes back to life. Then another. Then another. All four engines are running again. The aircraft glides. They have survived. For now. Against every expectation, the dead jet is coming back to life. Hope returns, but the danger is not over. With thrust restored, Captain Eric Moody gently raises the nose. The aircraft climbs, slowly and cautiously, away from the mountains below. But something is wrong. The windscreen is sandblasted opaque. The landing lights are destroyed. The engines vibrate violently, clogged with volcanic ash. This aircraft is alive, but badly wounded. The crew makes a critical decision. They will divert to Jakarta. As the Boeing 747 approaches Jakarta, the cockpit faces a terrifying reality. The pilots cannot see the runway. Ash has turned the windshield into frosted glass. No visuals, no margin for error. The landing must be done entirely by instruments. Passengers brace as the aircraft descends. Seconds stretch into eternity. Then the wheels touch down. A hard landing. But a landing nonetheless. British Airways Flight 009 rolls to a stop. Not a single life is lost. What happened that night rewrites aviation history. Captain Eric Moody's calm announcement becomes legendary. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We have a small problem. A sentence that masked one of the most extraordinary saves in aviation history. Volcanic ash becomes a recognized threat. Flight paths are redesigned. Ash detection systems are introduced worldwide. 